How do you predict the weather? The outcome is you can look for patterns in the weather so you can predict the weather. A pattern is something that repeats over and over. You may be familiar with the simple patterns. Red, blue, red, blue is a simple color pattern. There are many patterns in nature. One such pattern is the day, night, day, night pattern. Can you think of other patterns in nature? I bet you know a few. We're going to learn about some of those patterns now. When meteorologists study the weather, they look for patterns. The weather patterns will help them predict the type of weather we will have. Meteorologists use many tools to help them identify weather patterns so they can predict the weather. Predicting the weather is called weather forecasting. It is important for meteorologists to predict the weather so that we can better prepare for what it will be like tomorrow. If the weather is going to be super cold, we know to wear a hat, mittens, coat, and scarf over our clothes. But if the weather is going to be very hot, we know to wear shorts and a t-shirt. If the weather is going to be rainy, what should you use if you had to go outside? If you said you should wear a raincoat, rain boots, and use an umbrella, you're right. Those things would help keep you dry if it were raining. Meteorologists look for patterns. Have you ever watched a meteorologist on TV? They share information with us so we know how to prepare for the weather. Meteorologists study weather maps to look for patterns of weather. There are many different types of maps that meteorologists can study. They also study the air temperature using thermometers. The thermometers can measure air temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Most scientists around the world use Celsius to measure the temperature. Meteorologists look at wind direction using weather vanes. You may see a weather vane at the top of a building in your neighborhood. You can also see weather vanes on the top of barns. Another way to measure the direction of the wind is by using a wind sock. Wind socks are often used at airports. Radar is another tool that meteorologists use to make their predictions. Radar shows rain or snow in the clouds. The radar makes a picture and sends it to a computer. Computers help meteorologists collect the data from these tools. The data helps them make the weather forecasts. Earlier, we mentioned that meteorologists study the weather patterns to predict the weather in our area. We mentioned there are many patterns in nature. One of those patterns is the day-night pattern. Did you think of any other patterns in nature? The behavior of many birds is another pattern in nature. Many birds fly south for the winter. The weather is warmer in the south during winter months. In the spring, the birds fly back to the north. The north doesn't get as hot during the summertime as the South does. The birds make their homes where the temperature is perfect for them to survive. In Maryland, summer can be very hot, but the winter can be very cold. That's why many birds fly back and forth between Maryland and states in the South like Florida. Between summer and winter months, the temperature outside doesn't get as hot or as cold. We know this time of the year as spring or fall. Spring, summer, fall, and winter are seasons. Seasons are caused by the position of the earth compared to the sun. The earth always travels or revolves around the sun. While it revolves around the sun, the earth is tilted. That's what creates the seasons. Since the earth always revolves around the sun, the pattern of the seasons happen all year, every year. It never stops. It's another pattern in nature. There are patterns of weather for each season. In the spring, the North Pole starts to tilt towards the sun. This causes the sun to appear higher in the sky 
and our days start to get longer, so we have more sunlight. Spring is when the weather starts getting warmer than it was in the winter. We usually have many rainstorms in the spring. Most flowers start to bloom in the spring because the temperature is starting to get warmer outside. Lots of animals will have babies in the spring too. During the summer, the North Pole tilts towards the sun even more. That's why the sun appears very high in the sky. There is more daylight each day in the summer. The longer days and stronger sun causes our temperature to increase. That's why summers are much hotter than any other season. We also experience more thunderstorms in the summer. Take a peek at your shadow the next time you are outside in the summer. Because the sun is so high in the summer, your shadow will be much shorter than it is in the winter. Fall is often cooler than other seasons. That's because the North Pole is starting to tilt away from the sun. The sun appears lower in the sky and the length of day is getting shorter. The leaves on the trees start to change colors in the fall and fall is when students return to school. In the winter, it gets very cold in Maryland. The North Pole is tilted away from the sun. The sun is much lower in the sky, so there is less daylight than it is in the summer. Because there is less daylight, the sun has less time to heat the earth. Because the temperature is colder in the winter, winter is the season where Maryland often gets snow. If you look at your shadow in the winter, it will be very long and thin. Let's learn about the seasons. Before watching the four seasons, think about this. What are the names of the four seasons? What is the weather like during each season? living on the prairie, the cycle of life is determined by the cycle of the four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. America's prairies are located in the middle of the country. Tall grasses, wildflowers, bison, and millions of insects including butterflies, inhabit this land. On the prairie, each season lasts about three months. In spring, the prairie bursts with color. Warmer weather and spring rains bring new life to the prairie. As the saying goes, April showers bring May flowers. Flowers bloom and the prairie becomes a kaleidoscope of color. This is the first spring for many animals. Young bison, born in the very early spring, graze on grass and run and play. They stay close to their mothers. Salamanders, ladybugs, and grasshoppers are just a few of the many animals out looking for food in springtime. In summer, the days get warmer. The warm weather and summer sunshine cause grasses to grow tall. The grasslands provide shelter for insects and other small animals. Snakes and lizards lie in the sunshine, soaking in the warm rays. This lizard has a lot of energy. The baby birds that hatched in the spring are now fully grown. Ladybugs feed on tiny insects called aphids and grow bigger. By late August, millions of insects will buzz around the prairie. In the fall, also called autumn, temperatures drop. Plants and animals prepare for the coming winter months. In other parts of the country, the lush green landscape turns red, yellow, orange, and brown. During fall, the leaves of many trees change color and fall off, giving this season its name. As the weather begins to get cooler, geese, ducks, and other birds use the prairie as a stopping off point as they fly south for the winter. 
The bird's long journey is called migration. They fly south in search of warmer weather and food during the winter months. As winter arrives on the prairie, the days and nights turn cold. Some animals hibernate or take a long nap during the cold winter months. During this time, they need little food or water. Many plants shrivel and die. Snow often covers the prairie. Sometimes a blizzard strikes and it may snow for days. Here on the prairie, there are four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Think about it. What season is it where you live? Is it spring, summer, fall, or winter? How do you know? Is the temperature very hot or cold? Or is it somewhere in the middle and comfortably cool? Do you see rain or snow? Do you see lots of flowers? Are the leaves changing colors? These clues can help you identify the season. What should you wear during this time of year so that you are comfortable? Okay, Science Alliance, this morning, just hours ago, Aunt Jenna was trying to decide what to wear today. Yesterday, the weather was sunny with highs in the 50s. Does that mean the weather will be sunny again today? If all we know is yesterday's weather, how can we know what the weather will be like today? Discovery Science Alliance. Trying to dress for the weather, now that's a problem. We'll need to collect some data and examine the facts how the facts fit together to solve the problem. Discovery Science Alliance, today's mission, how can we figure out what the weather will be like today? Let's find out more about how scientists predict the weather and communicate their predictions. Every morning, Aunt Jenna wants to know how to prepare for the weather. I wonder how meteorologists, the people who study weather, predict what the weather will be. Let's check it out. Meteorologists observe and describe weather using words like sunny, rainy, snowy, breezy, cold, brr, and hot. After collecting data about the weather, meteorologists organize the data to help them see patterns and trends that will help them predict or forecast what the weather might be in the future. One way meteorologists communicate these weather forecasts is by using a calendar. Knowing how to read a table or chart can help us understand the weather forecast that meteorologists communicate. Want to try it out? I don't think the sun's out. It's pretty cold out here. It's cloudy and I can't see the sun. I can see my breath. <sighs> so let's think about the weather that we've seen in the past week. Can you remember what the weather was on Sunday? Rainy. Can you remember what the weather was like on Monday? Sunny, sun, sun, sun. It was a pretty sunny week. And now we just have to think about yesterday. What was it? Cloudy. Cloudy. Very cloudy. Then, meteorologists talk about their findings. What other observations can we make about our weather chart? Today's cloudy. Yesterday was also cloudy. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow might be cloudy. And it also might be raining tomorrow. Good predictions. Hey, recruits. Now it's your turn. Take a look at this calendar and make your own observations. Nice job, recruits. Let's record what we know in our Discovery Science Alliance lab notebooks. We know that meteorologists collect information about the weather and use tables and charts to organize this information. We also know that organizing this data helps meteorologists see patterns and trends. 
We know that meteorologists often communicate weather forecasts using calendars. Okay, Science Alliance, you've got the evidence. What do you think? How can Aunt Jenna figure out what to wear? Well, we know information about the weather helps us keep track of it. We know meteorologists like to organize their facts by charts and calendars. If Aunt Jenna knows what day of the week today is, she can look at the calendar of the weather forecast to see the predicted weather. Then she can determine what she should wear. Mystery solved. By tracking data from the past and making careful observations, meteorologists can predict what the weather might do in the near future and communicate this information to those who need it. Wonder what you'll discover as you investigate day-to-day -day weather changes. Let's review. In today's lesson, you learned how meteorologists use patterns to predict the weather. We asked you to look for patterns in the weather so that you can predict the weather too. You learned that there are many patterns in nature and that those patterns can help you predict what the weather might be. You used weather clues to figure out what season it is where you live. It's important to know what the weather will be like so you can be prepared for it and dress appropriately so you are comfortable and safe. We hope you had fun predicting the weather in your neighborhood. Use your new skills to keep observing the weather so you can stay safe. Keep learning and have a great week.